Bruce Lee's Lost Interview is a fascinating piece of history. It was recorded in 1971 for the Pierre Burton Show, but was lost for many years. The interview resurfaced in 1994 and provides valuable insights into Lee's philosophy, martial arts, and life. Enjoy, like, and subscribe for more. Bruce Lee faces a real dilemma. He's on the verge of a stardom in the United States with a projected TV series on the horizon, but he's just achieved superstardom. He's a film actor here in Hong Kong, so what does he choose? The East or the West? It's the kind of problem uh, that most budding movie actors would welcome. It's the Pierre Burton Show, the program that comes to you from the major capitals of the world. This edition comes to you from Hong Kong. And Pierre's guest is the man who taught karate, judo, and Chinese boxing to James Garner, Steve McQueen, Lee Marvin, and James Coburn. The newest Mandarin superstar, known in the West for his appearances in Batman, The Green Hornet, Ironside, and Long Street. His name is Bruce Lee, and he doesn't even speak Mandarin. And here's Pierre. Well, how can you play in Mandarin movies if you don't even speak Mandarin? How do you do that? Well, first of all, I speak only Cantonese. Yeah. So, I mean, there is quite a different as far as pronunciation and things like that go. So somebody else's voice is used, right? Really? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> you just make the words. Was it, doesn't that sound strange when you go to the movies, especially in, in Hong Kong, in your own town, and you see yourself with somebody else's voice? Well, not really, you see, because most of the Mandarin picture done here are dubbed anyway. They're dubbed anyway? Anyway, I mean, disregard. I mean, they shoot without sound. <laughs> So it doesn't, you know, make any difference. Your lips never quite make the right words, do they? Uh, the, yeah, well, well, that's where the difficulty lies, you see. I mean, in order to, because the Cantonese have a different way of saying things, you know, I mean, different from the Mandarin. Yeah. So uh, I have to find, like, something similar to that and, and keep a kind of a feeling going behind that. Something that matching the Mandarin do. Like does it silent sound complicated? <laughs> like the old silent days. But I gather in the, in the movies made here, the dialogue is pretty stilted anyway. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, uh, see, to me, a motion picture is motion. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you gotta keep the dialogue down to the minimum. Did you go to? Did you look at many Mandarin movies before you started uh, playing yes, in the first? Yes. Movie? Yes. yes what did you think of them when you saw them? Quality-wise, I mean, I have to admit yeah. that it's not quite up to the standard. However. It is growing, and it is getting higher and higher, and going to toward that standard, than what I would term quality. They say the secret of your success in that movie, uh, The Big Boss, yeah. it was such a success here, it rocketed you to start in, in Asia, was that you did your own fighting. Uh, as an expert in the, the various martial arts mm -hmm. in China, what did you think of the fighting that you saw in the movies that you studied before you became a star? Well, I mean, definitely in the beginning, I had no intention uh, or, or whatsoever that what I what I was practicing and what I'm still practicing now would lead to this yeah, <laughs> to I know. begin with. Uh, but martial art has a very, very deep meaning as far as my life is concerned, because uh, as an actor, as a martial artist, as a human being, all these I have learned from martial art. Maybe for our audience who doesn't know what it means, you might explain exactly right. what you mean by right. martial art. Right. Uh, martial art include all the combative arts like karate or judo. karate, judo, Chinese kung fu or Chinese boxing, whatever you call it. Uh, all those, you see like Aikido, Kori, I can go on and on and on. But it's a competitive form of fighting. I mean, it's not, some of them became sport, but some of them are still not. I mean, they use, for instance, kicking to the groin, jacking fingers at the eyes, and things like that. No wonder you're successful. Uh, <laughs> Chinese movies are full of this kind of action anyway. They needed a guy like you could... Violence, man. <laughs> so you didn't have to use a double when you moved into the motion picture world here. You did it all yourself. Can you break five or six uh, pieces of wood in your hand or your foot? I'll probably break my hand in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me a little bit... Uh, you set up a school in Hollywood, didn't you, for people like yes. uh, James Garner and Steve McQueen and the others? Yes. Why would they want to learn Chinese martial art? Because of a movie role? Not really. I mean, uh, most of them, you see, uh, to me, uh, at least the way that when I, mean, when I teach it, all type of knowledge ultimately means self knowledge. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they are coming in to, I mean, for, and ask me to teach them not so much of how to defend themselves or how to do somebody in. Rather, 
They want to learn to express themselves through some movement, be it anger, be it uh, determination, or whatsoever. So in other words, what I'm saying therefore is that he is paying me to show him in competitive form the art of expressing the human body. Which is acting in a sense, isn't it? Well, or it would be useful too for an actor to have. It's, I mean, I might, it, it might sound too philosophical, but it's an acting, acting, or acting, and acting. If you... You've lost me. <laughs> I have, right? So what I'm saying, actually, you see, I mean, it's a combination of both. I mean, here it is a natural instinct, and here is control. You are to combine the two in harmony. Not, if you have one to the extreme, you will be very unscientific. If you have another to the extreme, you become all of a sudden a mechanical man, no longer a human being. So you, it is a successful combination of both. So therefore, it is not only, I mean, so therefore it's not pure naturalness or unnaturalness. The ideal is unnatural naturalness or natural unnaturalness. <laughs> Yin Yang, eh? You're right, man, that's it. <laughs> yeah, one of your students, uh, James Coburn, played a, in a movie called Iron Man of Flint in which he used karate. Is that what he learned from you? Uh, he learned it after. Oh, he went, he, oh, yeah. after he played an arm right, right. You see, actually, I do not teach, you know, karate because I do not believe in styles anymore. I mean, I do not believe that there is such thing as like Chinese way of fighting or, or the Japanese way of fighting or whatever way of fighting because unless human being have three arms and four legs, we will have a different form of fighting. Mm -hmm. But basically we have only two hands and two feet. So styles tends to uh, 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 not only separate man, you know, because they have their own doctrines and then the doctrine became the gospel truth, you know, that you cannot change, you know. and but if you do not have styles, if you just say, well, here, here I am, you know, as, as a human being, how can I express myself totally and completely? Now, that way, you won't create a style because style is a crystallization, you know? I mean, that way, it's a process of continuing growth. You talk about the Chinese boxing. How does it differ from, say, our kind of boxing? Well, first, we use the feet. Oh, that's, that's and then we use the elbow. And use the thumb. <laughs> <laughs> you name it, man. We use it all. <laughs> you have to, you see, because I mean that is the expression of the human body. I mean, the f everything. I mean, you know, not just the hand. And when you're talking about combat, well, I mean, if, if it if it is a sport, now now you're talking about something else. You have regulations, you have rules. But when you're talking about fighting, as it is, no rules. with no rules, Not real fighting. Well, then, baby, you better train every part of your body. And when you do punch, now I'm leaning forward a little bit, yeah. hoping not to hurt any camera angle. Yeah. I mean, you gotta put the whole hip into it and then snap it and get all your energy in there and make this into a weapon. I don't want to tangle you in any dark way. <laughs> that, that right now, you, you came at me pretty fast there. What is the difference between Chinese boxing and what we see these young men doing at eight o'clock every morning on the rooftop uh -huh. in the parks called shadow boxing, which they're always... Well, actually, you see, that is part of Chinese boxing. Yes. There are so many schools. Everybody schools. here seems to be, you know, going like this all the time. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm very shape? glad. I'm very glad to see that because at least somebody is caring for their own body, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a good sign. Well, it's a kind of a slow form of exercise, which is called Tai Chi Chuan. I'm speaking Mandarin just now. Yeah. Yeah. Cantonese Tai Te Ku, okay? And uh, it's more of an exercise for the elderly, not so much for the Give me young. a demonstration. Show me, can you do a little bit of it? Just I mean, so the hand-wise, it's very slow. Oh, is it? And you push it out, but all the time you are keeping the continuity going. Bending, stretching, everything. You know, suppose, you know, I mean, you, you just keep it moving. It's like a ballet dancer there. Yeah, it is. I mean, to, to them, you see, the idea is Running water never grows stale, so you gotta just keep on flowing. Of, of all your <coughs> students, famous James Garner, Steve McQueen, Lee Marvin, James Coburn, Roman Polanski, which was the best? Who adapted best to this Oriental form of exercise and defense? Well, um, depending. Okay, now as a fighter, Steve, Steve McQueen, 
Now, he is good in that department because that son of a gun got the toughness in him. I see it on the screen. I mean, he would say, all right, baby, here I am, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and he'll do it. Yeah. Now, James Colburn is a peace-loving man. Yeah, I met him. Right? I mean, yeah. you've met him. I mean, he's really, really nice. I mean, yeah. super mellow and all of that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, now, he appreciates the philosophical part of it. Therefore, his understanding of it is deeper than Steve. So it's really hard to say. You see what I'm saying yeah. now? I see. I mean, it's, I mean, it's different. So, so that's, I mean, depending on what you, what you see in it. Interesting. Uh, you know, uh, we don't, in our world, and haven't since the days of the Greeks who did, combine philosophy and art with sport. But quite clearly, the Oriental attitudes of the three are facets of the same things. Man, listen, you see, really, to me, okay, to me, ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. Now, it is very difficult to do. I mean, it, it is easy for me to put on a show and be cocky yeah. and be flooded with a cocky feeling and then yeah. feel like pretty cool and all that. Or I can f make all kinds of phony thing, you see what I mean? Blinded by it. Or I can show you some f really fancy movement. But to express oneself honestly, not lying to oneself, and to express myself honestly, you know, that, my friend, is very hard to do. And you have to train. You have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it, it's there. When you want to move, you're moving. And when you move, you are determined to move. Not taking one inch, not anything less than that. If I want to punch, I'm going to do it, man. And I'm going to do it, you see. So, I mean, so that is the type of thing you have to train yourself into it. To become one with the you think and this is very unwestern this attitude i want to ask you about your movie and tv career but first uh, we'll take a break and i'll be back with bruce lee i've been talking to bruce lee mainly about the chinese martial arts which include things like chinese boxing karate and judo which is what he taught when he was in hollywood after he left the University of Washington, where he studied, of all things, philosophy, if you can believe that. <laughs> he did, but that, uh, perhaps you'll understand why he, the two go together from the first half of this program. And you can perhaps understand how he got into films, he knew a lot of actors, but I am told that you got the job on the Green Hornet, where you played Cato the chauffeur, mainly because you're the only Chinese-looking guy who could pronounce the name of the leading character, Brits Ree. <laughs> I meant that as a joke, of course. You know? <laughs> and it's a heck of a name, man. I mean, every time I said it at that time, I was super conscious. I mean, you know, that's another interesting thing, huh? Let's say if you learn to speak Chinese. Yeah. And it's very, I mean, it's not difficult to learn and speak the word. The hard thing, the difficult thing, it's behind what is the meaning, what brought on the expression and feelings behind those words. Like when I first arrived in the United States and I look at a Caucasian and I really would not know whether he was putting me on yeah. or is he really angry because, because we have different ways of reacting. Of course. Right? See, those are the difficult things, you see. It's almost as if you came upon a strange race where a smile didn't mean what it does to us. In fact, a smile doesn't always mean the same, does it? Of course not. Yeah, it's totally not. Tell me about the big break when you played in Long Street. I, I ah, must tell the audience that uh, that's it. Bruce Lee had a bit part or a, a supporting role in, in, in the Long Street series, and this had an enormous effect on the audience. What was it? Well, you see, um, the w title of that, ep that particular episode of Long Street is called The Way of the Intercepting Schist. Now, I think the successful ingredient in it was because I was being Loosely. Yourself. Myself, right. And did that part, just express myself, like I say, honestly express myself at that time. And I, because of that, I, I brought, you know, favorable mentioning in like New York Times, uh, which says like the Chinaman, uh, who incidentally came off uh, quite convincingly enough to earn himself a television series and so on and so on and so forth. Can you remember the lines by uh, Sterling Sullivan, uh, the key lines? He's one of my students, you know. Right? Was he too? Yes. <laughs> about everybody is my student. But you read, there were some lines that expressed your philosophy. I don't know if you remember them or not. Oh, you? I remember. I That's said, here. This is what it is, okay? You're talking to Long Street, played by James Francisco. I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, 
it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can slow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Like that, is it? Yeah, I see, I get the idea. Uh -huh. I get the, the power behind it. So now, uh, two things have happened. First, there's a pretty good chance that you'll get a TV series that states of the Warriors, in which you use, what, the martial arts uh, well, in a Western setting? Uh, that was the original idea. Now, yeah. Paramount, you know, I did Long yeah. Street for Paramount, and Paramount wants me to be in a television series. On the other hand, Warner Brother wants me to be in another one, but both of them, I think, they want me to be in a modernized type of a thing, and they think that Western idea is out. Whereas you would, you I would, want... You want to do the Western idea? I would, because you see, I mean, how else can you justify all these punching and kicking and violence yeah. except in the period of the West? I mean, in the, in nowadays, I mean, you don't go around on the street kicking people or punching people. Because if you do, yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah. I don't care how good you are, you know. But this is true also of the Chinese dramas, which are mainly costume dramas. They're all full of blood and gore over here. Oh, you mean here? Yeah. yeah. Well, unfo unfortunately, you see. Uh, uh, I hope that the picture I am in would either explain why the violence was done, whether right or wrong or whatnot. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. pictures, both of them here, are done mainly just for the sake of violence. You know what I mean? Like, you know, fighting for 30 minutes, get stabbed for the 50 minutes. Well, I'm fascinated. Uh, well, I'll give you your microphone back. <laughs> I'm fascinated that you came back. Uh... You came back to Hong Kong on the verge of success in Hollywood and full of it. And suddenly, on the strength of one picture, you become a superstar. Everybody knows you. You have to take, you have to change your phone number. You get mobbed in the streets. Uh, now, what are you going to do? Are you going to are you going to be able to live in both worlds? Are you going to be a superstar here or, or one in the States or both? Well, let me say this. First of all, uh, 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 the word superstar really turned me off, and I'll tell you why. Because the word star, man, is an illusion. It's something what the public calls you. You should look upon oneself as an actor. You know? I mean, you would be very pleased if somebody say, hey man, you are a super actor. It is much better than, you know, superstar. Yeah, Therefore, you've got I, to admit that you are a superstar, you know, if you're going to give me the truth. I am, now, I'm honestly saying this, okay? Yes, I have been very successful, yeah. okay? But I, I mean, I think the word star is, is I mean, I, I do not look upon myself as a star. I, I really don't. I mean, believe me, man, yeah. when I say it. I mean, I'm not saying it because I'm... What are you going to do? Let's get back to the question. Okay. <laughs> are you going to are you gonna stay in Hong Kong and be famous? Or are you going to go to the United States and be famous? Or are you going to try and eat I'm, your cake and have it too? I am going to do both because, you see, I have already made up my mind that in the United States, I think something about the Oriental, the, I mean, the true... Oriental should be shown. Hollywood sure as heck hasn't. You better believe it. Man. I mean, it's always the pigtail and bouncing around, chop chop, you know, with the eyes slant and all that. And I think that's very, very. Is it dangerous. true that you were the first uh, job you had was being cast as Charlie Chan's number one? Yeah, movie? number one son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they never made a movie. No, 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 no. They were gonna make it into like a new Chinese James Bond type of it. Oh. Now that you know the old man Chan is dead, oh. Charlie is dead, and his son. Oh, I see. Henry, but they didn't do that. Bad man came along, you see, because oh, and then everything was started to be going into that, you know, that kind of art, yeah, which you were in. But is I, it? I mean, by the way, I did a really terrible job in that. I have to say, really, you didn't like so. Yeah. I didn't see it. Let me ask you, however, about the, the problems that you face as a Chinese hero in an American series. Have people come up in the industry and said, "Well, we don't know how the audience are going to take a non-American." Well, such question has been raised. In fact, it is, it is, it is being discussed. And that is why the warrior is probably is not going to be on. I see. You see, because uh, unfortunately, um, such thing does exist in this world. You see, like, I don't know, certain part of the country, right? Where, like, they think that business-wise, it's a risk. And I don't blame them. And I don't blame them. I mean, in the same way, it's like in Hong Kong. If a foreigner come and be and became a star, if I were the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, man, the man with the money, 
I probably would have my own worry of whether or not the acceptance would be there. But that's all right, because if you, if you honestly express yourself, it doesn't matter, see? Because are you, uh, how about the other side of the coin? Is it possible that you are, I mean, you're fairly hip and fairly <laughs> Americanized. Are you too Western uh, for Oriental audiences? You think? Uh, oh, man, like, <laughs> how? <laughs> I have been, Yeah, I have been criticized for that. You have? Oh, oh definitely. Uh, well, let me say this. When I do the Chinese film, I'll try my best not to be as American as I, you know, have been adjust to for the last 12 years in the States. And But when I go back to the States, it seems to be the other way around. You know too exotic, mean? eh? Yeah, man. I mean, they're trying to get me to do too many things that are really for the sake of being exotic. You, you, you understand what I'm trying to do? Oh, sure. There, so it's really, I mean, it's... When a, you live in both worlds, you, there's, it, it brings us problems as well as advantages, yeah. and you've got both. Time to go to a commercial. I'll be back in a moment with Bruce Lee. Let me ask you whether the change in attitude on the part of the Nixon administration towards China has helped your chances of starring <laughs> in an American TV series. Well, first of all, this happened before that. Yeah. But I do think that things of Chinese will be quite interesting for the next few years. I mean, not that I'm political, you know, inclining toward anything. No, I understand that. I just want to... But I mean, I mean, once the opening of, 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 of China, you know, I mean, that it will bring more understanding. Yeah. More things that are, hey, like, different, you know? And maybe in the contrast of comparison, some new thing might grow. So therefore, I mean, it's a very rich period to be in. I mean, like, if I were born, let's say, uh, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like and subscribe for more.